Good. Thanks. Welcome. My name is uh, Garrett Murphy, and this is my video for leading. These are the coaches. Coaches wave. Hello. Thank you. All right. Here's my evidence of the prepared agenda for the focus group meeting. So, Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I brought y'all here today to uh, under the direction I visited with. Mr. Flores to uh, plan a meeting that will lead with a focus group to assess the effectiveness and perceived importance that professional development has in teacher growth. The focus group will be comprised of a broad spectrum of teachers, but me and Mr. Flores decided that it was better to get the coach's viewpoint to get a uh, more direct perspective. And uh, I will present my findings and my recommendations to the campus team. Can we introduce ourselves and tell us, the group, what you do? Coach Medina. Uh, coach Medina, I'm a football, softball coach, and I do the ISS at the middle school. Talk about myself. Yeah, some background. Been coaching uh, 31 years in Texas, two in New Mexico, and four at the college level, 37 years altogether. Thank you, sir. Coach Brotherton. Coach Brotherton here, coach 8th uh, grade football here, high school golf, uh, teach health and technology uh, here at the middle school. I don't have uh, an extensive uh, background of this fellow here, but as a player I did play against him in high school while he was still coaching, so that does not age any of us here today. <laughs> but, yeah, that's who I am. I think it's your... Sure. Coach De Los Santos. Coach De Los Santos. I do basketball and track. Um, I also do uh, PE. I've been coaching for about eight years. Oh. My name is Coach Vasquez. I've been coaching for 20 years. Uh, coach football and track and baseball here at Cal Island. Uh, I've been here at Cal Island 10 years. And uh, middle school coordinator. And uh, I have a blast here at Cal Island Middle School. Nice. Coach Lopez. Lamar Lopez. Uh, I coach eighth grade basketball and set eighth grade volleyball and also high school softball. Uh, I am the head of girls athletics here at CMS. I've been teaching for 13, I've been teaching and coaching for 13 years and I teach PE. And I as well love it here at CMS. Go Wildcats. 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 Okay, um, introduction. Now I'm going to ask you all a set of guiding questions that facilitate the focus group in identifying and addressing specific areas of need as well as appropriate follow-up questions. And at the conclusion, feedback from the focus group members regarding the degree of success in achieving the meeting's purpose and relevance as well as effectiveness slash efficiency of time management, communication, collaboration, and listening. We'll take a survey at the end. Okay. Guiding um, questions. Okay, Coach Medina, I'm going to ask you all uh, five questions. Uh, each one of you gets a chance to answer each question. Okay. And feel free to take your time. Think time. Wait time. Wait time for your response. Okay. Coach Medina, how effective are the professional development opportunities here at CMS? I think they're, of course, just like all professional development, there are some that you get more information out of and that can help you later in the classroom. You know, some not so much, but they're still enlightening and, you know, educational. Uh, he says, I've been here, these are the best, <laughs> believe me, these are the best in-services I've ever been a part of. I mean, anywhere, New Mexico, anywhere, in any other districts. Rockport, CCISD, ODAM, Texas, uh, and so you know some are, some you know some people talk about waste of time, but you know people say that. But if they get one thing out of every in service, then they've gotten better. Okay, good answer. Okay, Coach Brotherton, how effective are the professional development opportunities here at CMS? I would like to say that I hope because we're having to speak on our behalf, but if I would try to speak on behalf of everybody else here as well, that, that they should be uh, pretty good for us all. Um, 
on my side of it also, being uh, Campus Technology Contact CTC here, and having to do some of those professional developments, like today we had one uh, over Microsoft Office 365, and I hope that everybody got everything that they needed out of that, even though it was just a broad overview. Uh, we try to bring things to the school and to the teachers that we can, you know, broaden their horizons and be able to utilize more things in the classroom, such as the Office 365, where all of the kids will get it too. So now you can bring in a collaborative classroom from the technology aspect of it uh, while they're at home or wherever they may be. If they happen to be absent, they can go there and be able to utilize the office documents as well from any location. So if they're sick or absent, teacher puts it on there, it's ready for them to go ahead and have access to it at home. So there's, there's no delay of learning from those guys. So uh, just little things like that, I, I think, help improve everybody here. And, you know, as long as we keep steering that line, if it has an interest to a teacher, then, you know, it'll have an interest to the student. Uh, if it's something that nobody's really interested in and you just don't see any way that you're not going to use it, then you might have a downfall there. Uh, there's where you have your surveys to determine what do we need most at the school and, and utilize what everybody's wanting and try to do those because you're obviously going to have a, a lot more interest in it than anything else. Very good. Coach De La Santos, how effective are the professional development opportunities here at CMS? I think um, for the most part they are effective. We all can benefit from learning new things. Um, the more professional development opportunities we have, the better we are as teachers and the better we can serve our students in the classroom. So I think um, they, they're doing a good job. I would like to see more of the uh, safety like when we had. Mm -hmm. I think that's that we need to kind of expand on. That was a good one. Uh, Coach Vasquez, how effective are the professional development opportunities? Well, I, I think these guys have already answered you know, that question to like exactly the way it needs to be answered. But following up with Coach Del Santos, we need uh, in services that I think we could maybe suggest that we have something that's uh, maybe more, you know. And with our field of, of, of teaching, uh, safety, uh, safety for the kids. Uh, I think when you got teachers that are going to be interested in what they're going into, you know, they're going to be more tentative and, and, uh, and more apt to want to, to wanna be in there. Now, the stuff that we did today was great. Now, I got to admit, some of it was over my head, which I, you know, I need three or four or five in services, and sometimes that's not, uh, you know, that's not a applicable but uh, again it's uh, it, these in services that we have here at Cal Island you know I know they're, they're great for everybody uh, but there's also things that they need to understand that we need to suggest to have that we think will make ourselves not only better educators but you know better for the students as well. Yes, sir. Coach Lopez how effective are the professional development opportunities? Well like everyone else said I think they are effective um, but I would like to see more in the field that we work with, like Coach Vasquez said. Um, I think a lot of times we don't, I think they, they we can do all these uh, computer things and like teaching strategies and stuff, but there's not a lot of kin kinetic stuff that could, could um, that we could kind of, kind of collaborate with the teachers in the regular classroom um, and bring it to our, to our classroom as well. Um, as PE teachers, and I know not everybody's a PE teacher, but I'm kind of talking about, you know, about what what I teach. But like Coach Medina said, I was in Odom for ten years, and there was a lot of in services, not dish in Odom, not dish in Odom, but there's a lot of in service that we never really like implemented that. And being here for three years, there we have in service, and we actually would use some of the things. So I think they they're very effective. Okay, back to you, Coach Medina. Are there adequate opportunities provided for professional development? Oh, here, here, yes, especially. Uh, you can go to services on almost any subject, you know, being offered. Of course, we, we make use of the Education Service Center mm -hmm. downtown, and you can, I mean, there's a whole book full of in services you can sign up for and take, which may be something that we need to look to forward in the future, like, 
us four here in the middle go to PEN service or something, or something more along the lines of our subject area, or have a coach come in and talk to all the coaches about maybe something relating to athletics or you know certain sports, you know how districts are run and what they do other places, and you know maybe hiring or firing, you know practices of other places would, would be, you know, really interesting. Mm -hmm. You may not want to know a whole file, but it's something that's out there and it's part of this profession. Thank you, sir. Coach Brotherton, are there adequate opportunities provided for professional development? Well, without trying to be repetitive, because you're going to hear this over and over again, I think, in here, and it's, it's going to be repetitive, but, you know, like he said, we have the service center that we can, anything that we want to go to, put in the application for and, and request to have the day to be able to go over there and, and have that training. Um, it's a little bit different for myself than you guys because you guys are in the gym, that's your classroom, and that is different than what our classrooms are and what we can do uh, as compared to what you guys can do. Um, but like this year, I think, is one of the first years that we've actually been uh, sent an email for our own individual campuses or for Cal Island ISD to be able to have in services directly through them at the, the annex. So that's something that's new that they've kind of done this year. Uh, but, you know, back to as far as like coaches and, and the PE aspect of it and stuff, we haven't had anything probably for what, three years now. The catch training program is really the latest that I think for PE coaches that anything's been done that would even remotely be geared towards uh, something inside of the gym. So those, like you said, can always be looked upon and try to find more things like that for you guys. Coach De Santos, are there adequate opportunities provided for professional development? Again, yes there is, but as far as our field PE, no, I would say no. Yeah. Okay. Coach Vasquez, I repeat the question. Are there adequate opportunities provided for professional development? Definitely. There are definitely uh, adequate opportunities. However, as Coach uh, Medina mentioned and, and Coach De Los Santos, not enough for physical education or exercise and sports science or personal fitness or whatever you want to call PE. Uh, I think we need to find a way to, whether we meet with other schools or other teachers and, and, and figure out what's going to be uh, uh, best for our school as a whole. Now we have this catch program, we have this fitness program that we have to take, uh, but I think we need to find something where our kids are just more active in the gym or on the football field or on the track. Something that makes it fun for them to exercise. You know, we got basketball and football and baseball and, and softball and dodgeball and, and games like that we, that we play. Uh, but if we can find our bring in ideas from other schools or even from the service center that gets more kids involved and having fun and wanting to be out there and wanting to move around, then I think that's going to be, uh, you know, better for us as a, as a school district and, and, you know, across the state of Texas. So. Coach Lopez, are there adequate opportunities provided for professional development? I think there is adequate uh, opportunities. I don't think that they're often promoted like they are in other um, subject areas. And what I mean by that, like we have a dean of instruction, and I think the dean of instruction goes and tells the English teachers, you need to go to this, you need to go to that. Whereas at PE teachers, we're kind of left off to the side, and kind of, you know, we have to find time to find our own trainings, or our own, you know, opportunities to, to, to growth, whether it be, um, you know, at the service center, or tapered, or wherever, you know, whatever opportunities those are. I just think that we're kind of always kind of just, you know, they're in the gym, they got PE, we're, we're not looked at, since it's an elective or considered an elective, it's, it's not, doesn't seem to be as important as, as the other stuff. When it, when it should be, as seeing as what our kids' health are now and diabetes and uh, obesity and everything else, um, I think it should be important. So. Right, Coach Medina, uh, new question. In what areas is professional development adequate or and or most beneficial? Mm. I think most of it's directed to the classroom teacher. You know, we've already been on this before, but uh, 
take for instance, if, if Lamar wants to go to a, a tapered convention or something like that, I think they, you know, we could probably get them to pay for our registration, but as far as travel and room and board and all that stuff, that, you know, totally be, you know, up to us. Uh, you know, whereas most of the other stuff, yeah, you still got to travel in town, but it's, it's, it's local. Okay, it's not something that you can go anywhere. If you want to be a better coach, I mean, you know, when I wanted to become, when I wanted to start off in baseball at the very beginning, you know, I went to spring training. I went and saw what was being done. You know, then I went back and I was at the college at the time, at the university, so I was able to do, you know, stuff like that. But if you want to learn from the best, you've got to be around the best. You know, I think, I think in a classroom, you know, you can get plenty of from around the best, and you've got, uh, like what are they called, uh, simulcasts and all that type of stuff that you can be incorporated, you know, into the classroom. Of course, being done somewhere else, maybe New York University, but you can get it online here. Coach Brotherton, in what areas is professional development adequate and or most beneficial? Like Coach Medina said, adequate for classroom teachers, but more specifically core classroom teachers, because I am a classroom teacher. And, uh, you know, just like you said, that our Dean of Instruction will go let, you know, the ELA teachers or the math teachers, the science teachers, hey, this is where we need to go. Curriculum, you know, work in your curriculum and things like that. They're always guided by somebody to do something. The rest of us, elective teachers, just in general, electives, we're left out on our own to figure everything out and do stuff on our own. Uh, you know, you got to find the stuff on your own. You got to put in for it and convince them that you need to go to it uh, and things like that. So, you know, a little more from from uh, the higher up side, if you will, and curriculum advisors to assist us as well because there is no assistance for us. It's here's your class. This is what you do. Good luck. How about it? As to where everybody else has their curriculum days, everybody else. You know, there's a lot of things that are specific to ELA, specific to science, specific, you know, it's all specific to those core classes, again, which leads into the uh, STAR test, you know, don't teach the test, but yet we got to make sure we have everything perfect so that those kids can pass the STAR, but you're an elective, so we're not too worried about you, you know, so they can, you know, try to make that better on our end for us. Coach Dennis Santos, in what areas is professional development adequate and or most beneficial? Well, again, like these two coaches said, it's more beneficial to the core subjects um, as far as our subject, physical education. I mean, there's nothing really out there. So, I mean, I would like to see more of um, things geared towards our field, which I think we, you know, that would help us a little bit better than, I mean, the stuff that they do now is great, but we don't teach a core subject. So, I mean, it, we're really, we do get some benefits from it, but as far as to put that in the classroom, I mean, we, we could do better. The district could do better. Coach Vasquez, in what areas is professional development adequate slash most beneficial? It's, well, it's most <coughs> beneficial for students. Uh, you know, our, most of our professional development, or 95% I'm saying, is designated for the classroom teachers, the core subjects. So those guys and, and, and females and our teachers are able to, you know, work, work amongst each other in their department and say, we're going to do this with this Kagan strategy. I, I believe we had a, an in service over Kagan strategy yesterday, day before yesterday. So those core teachers get to go back and say, hey, I think we can use that doing this. And then they can say, they can tell the history department or the social studies department, hey, we're going to do it this way. And then they can go tell the math department, hey, we're going to do it this way. But if we were to send Coach Lopez to the uh, Tayford uh, Convention in San Marcos this summer. Frisco. In Frisco. <laughs> then she's not going to be able to come back and tell the math department, hey, this is what we're going to do in PE. Let's see how it's going to help you in uh, in the uh, math class. So, you know, I think all those professional developments are more adequate just for the core classroom teachers and not anything for PE and athletics. Thank you, sir.
Coach Lopez, in what areas is professional development adequate slash most beneficial? Say again. In what areas is professional development adequate slash most beneficial? In PE area, I would have to say, in, no? Yeah, in PE. In, P, in, in the PE area, I think it's mainly like, it's not the strategies that we could use like in regular classrooms, because it's, it's not a regular classroom. So I don't know how, just like what they said, it, it's not very adequate sometimes. Um, and I think, it, we, like I said, we just get left up out of sometimes. That's a hard question. <laughs> Let me change the, or just interject here. One of the things that we had to end up doing was uh, getting together as a PE department, you know, then I started in Rockport, we did the same thing in New Mexico. But we came up with our own obesity plan, our own way of elevating the heart rate and stuff. And what we ended up doing, it worked out actually really great, is we always had two PE instructors, at least, you know, in every, in every period. So one would stay over here in the gym, okay, and the other one would go out to the track. And every day, without fail, you go around that track four times. Then you could jog, you could jog walk, you could walk the whole thing. You know, we took turns, one in the gym and one out there every day, till everybody went four times. You had a roll call. You just put a little check every time they walked by you. And uh, once they and once they got done with their four, they ran in here and started basketball. Started just warm up shooting, then one on one, two on two, three on three. They just went into half court games and stuff like that. But we had to, you know, we implemented that ourselves. And then on rainy days, everybody lined up on the gym, on the floor. You know, push up position. Down, up, down, up. You know, sit up, same thing, stretching, that's all good, that stuff. That's a good tone right there. You should make that fitness ground. Right. You are the fitness ground, right? <laughs> but, uh, and, and, and it worked out pretty good. And actually, the kids, you could actually see them their body change, you know, especially at the young, with most of these were freshmen and sophomores. But they're coming from middle school and all of a sudden you can see their body change and they got into a lot better shape and all of a sudden they went from being on the sidelines of basketball to actually getting out there and shooting. Now they weren't very good but they went out there and they you know, tried to play and that was good. I just, I, and let me say something. Um, when I came here three years ago, the coach that had really done the catch program, I mean she left and it was kind of just like there was no training, there was nothing offered. Um, when there was finally a training last year, was it last year, it was like a very watered down uh, develop, you know, professional development day or whatever. It was kind of, it was like three days of training on that program put into like a day, if, if a day. So I just, sometimes I think people just forget or administration just forgets that new people come in and uh, if they want to implement programs that they probably pay a lot of money to implement, mm -hmm. um, that, that those training opportunities need to be offered, not to be forgotten. Fourth question, Coach Medina, in what areas is professional development inadequate? Huh. I think we kind of, <laughs> you know, we're kind of beating a dead horse, but, yeah. you know, the non-core subjects, and really, all of them, band, choir, theater arts, I mean, what have we learned about theater arts or band or music or choir or anything in any end service, or PE other than the one we had last year? You know, we went and, and the answer is none. You know, technology, you know, Coach Brotherton here, that's going to be an every year thing. You have to have technology because technology changes as, as we sit here. Do we still have, a, do we still have team leadership? Uh, it's part of the sixth grade wheel. Okay. All right. So, so okay, we just finished up, so we're going to question number four? Yes, we're, 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 we're going to go this way now. Okay. Oh, crap. Uh, Coach Lopez, there you go. We are number four. In what areas is professional development inadequate? Inadequate. Last time was adequate. No, it's inadequate. Now they're inadequate. Um, just kind of what we said before. 
just not enough opportunity. Um, geared in in our area. Sound like I just keep repeating myself. Exactly. But that's what I think. That's what we're. But it's okay though. We're but yeah, it's I just I just think issues. it's because there's just not. Really it's together. just not promote. It's just not promoted. It's just not you know like like it. And I think sometimes I know I've put in for some time. I've put in like to go to either coaching clinic or tapered or whatever, and it's kind of like people drag their feet. And it's just I I just think sometimes it needs to be a little bit more important. So in that way, it is inadequate. I think opportunities are not opportunities. Opportunities are there. Maybe the process is inadequate. Does that make sense? It makes sense. Yeah. Good answer. Coach Vasquez, in what areas is professional development inadequate? Okay. 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 Again, we're all probably going to say the same thing about not enough focus is given to the personal fitness aspect of a student's life at, at whatever school district they go to. But when we're talking about the inadequacies of in services geared towards us, the non-core teachers, some of the stuff, I don't want to say is over our head, but <laughs> some of the stuff as far as we did a uh, Office 365 today, which is a great program that could seem like it's going to help a lot of people doing lessons simultaneously at the same time and being able to be on one computer and then the other teachers on the other computer and they're making notes back and forth to each other at the same time. So it's going to be great in that aspect. But how does that help a two PE teachers that are usually at the, in the same gym at the same time where, you know, we're not going to, plus we only have one computer in there, so it's not like we're going to be able to be sharing stuff unless we do stuff at home, but the inadequacies are just, in my opinion, something that is not beneficial to non-core teachers. That's what I'm thinking. Coach Dan Santos, in what areas is professional development inadequate? Who's here? We're being recorded. Do you, want, you want to come in and give your point of view real quick? <laughs> it's a focus group. Come on in. This is a. Uh, Whatever y'all think, I agree. Camera's over there. <laughs> Whatever y'all think, I agree with. Okay. Nice. No, seriously, what are y'all doing? We're recording right now. It's a focus group. We're heading on to our 45 minute time right now. Hey, see yourself on YouTube, okay? You'll be on YouTube. <laughs> we totally planned this. <laughs> I don't know that person. <laughs> <laughs> Where were we on? Okay, all right. Coach does something. In what areas is professional development inadequate? Um, again, I mean, like Coach said, we just keep saying the same thing. I mean, as far as the encore subjects, it's not adequate. I mean, we kind of are off to the side and a lot of the uh, things that we do, yes, they're important, but for like math and science and that, you know, those departments, they'll use that, but like Coach said, we're out there sometimes on the field um, in the gym and for us, it's really not that adequate. Coach Brotherson? I think that question is yet to be determined as far as PE coaches are. For example, Kagan training yesterday. That's great for the four teachers. I'll try to find ways, hopefully, in my classroom to use it. It'll be interesting to see how you guys use that. So there's a training that we had a half a day on, Kagan training. Now, so everybody had to go to that, including you, you coaches. Let's see then in August, September, when you have PE. What are you going to do? How are you going to use it? Is, it going to, is that going to be adequate? How are you going to use these Kagan trainings for PE? That's something that, well, if they told us over there, kind of took side out for a minute and said, so, for example, in PE, you could do this, but they never did. It was never about that. It was always about in the classroom. So that answer uh, could come in August or September and see how well that goes over. Question, Dina? Pick the question. In what areas is professional development inadequate? Okay. Uh, you know, I taught coach in New Mexico, and New Mexico had one of the worst educational systems in the United States. Okay? 
That being said, we had some of the best in services because math went to math in services. Okay? English, ELR, all that went to their in service. Electives, okay, went to their own in services. Okay? Music band went to their own in service. PE, athletics, all coaches went to a different in service. And actually worked out a lot better as far as, you know, stuff that was being done in other schools. And, you know, with Albuquerque being, you know, pretty relatively close, 20 minutes away, you know, we're in the system with all the Albuquerque schools and all the, you know, the, the private schools there, and they have quite a few of them. You know, St. Pius, Albuquerque Academy, stuff like that. But in that aspect, that was more adequate for in-servicing electives. Okay, here I don't know if we could have something that would all the elective teachers would go to one spot. You know, I don't know if we could or we may have to break it down even more than that. But as far as me learning something else new about PE today, no, I didn't learn anything new about you know PE today. Hmm. You know, teaching ISS, I definitely didn't learn anything about hmm. PE today. But I, you know, maybe there should be a big say watered down version, but maybe a we, we could go to Coach Brotherton's room and let somebody else handle the other technology and he could help us with putting pictures on schedules. You know, how to do spreadsheets, make them more make it know, more just make them better. to us to something that we something could do. Would, would be more useful for coaches in each of their sports. Mm -hmm. Whether it's, you know, how to do the spreadsheet and make timelines, you know, what you do at, you know, 3.30, at 3.40, at 3.50, stuff like that. I think that would be more useful technology-wise to us than maybe some of the stuff we did today. Last question. <coughs> Coach Lopez, what degree of importance do the members place on professional development? How important is professional development to you? What was the first part? Do you members? Members of what? Teachers. Just teachers, coaches, the staff, people you heard. Like people who are actually doing the... What do you think the importance of professional development is for the school and you personally? Oh, I think it's, it's very important because I think there's always something new that to learn or to bring to your classroom and different strategies and um, I think with technology, everything is evolving so much. The way our kids learn is so much uh, is is so different, um, and so I, it's very important for me personally. Um, like kind of like what Coach Medina said in the in his previous answer is, I just like for it to be presented in a way that we could like would actually get our attention, I guess, and where we could actually use it, um, whether it be you know. Uh, you know, I, I know that we used uh, Living Tree very, very often um, to communicate to our athletes or whatever. Um, and I think just by talking sometimes, we kind of get new ideas. Like there is a, a new app that I talked to another coach where she does every, everybody applies to that app. And she does her schedule, she does her, her practices, she does everything through that app. Um, and they don't know your phone number, they don't, you know, it, it's kind of, it's just out there. And so I think sometimes by just talking to other teachers in professional development that you get ideas as well. So yes, it's very important to me. Um, I would like to be, to have more, especially since you have to have credit hours for your certificate now um, in professional development that actually has to get to the state, I think it's, it's it's very important. Not only because of that, but just to, to learn to bring something new to the table. Coach Vasquez, what degree of importance do other teachers place on professional development and you personally? Okay, one more time. The, um, the importance of professional development that you've heard from other teachers and well, you personally. Well, the importance of professional development is, I mean, it's extremely important because some of the higher-ups, whether it's our you know, dean of academics or 
superintendent or somebody in the in the state education agency is saying, hey, if, if we teach you guys this and then you go teach it on your campus, then it's going to be beneficial for your students. So I understand that it is important. But again, is that stuff important to all the teachers that are in that in-service? No, not necessarily. I mean, again, if, if one of the key words by one of the presenters today said, hey, in uh, Dallas, these coaches are doing this to, to have their workout plan. Then all the coaches in the room are going to perk up a little bit and say, oh, let, let me listen to what that's about. But if we're just talking about Microsoft Office 365 or whatever it is and putting pictures together in a stray form or whatever sway. it is, sway form sway. Sway. that we did today, then some of us are like, what is, you know, what is this all about? You know, How is this going to help? Uh, us getting the kids to participate in uh, in running laps and not being overweight, you know. So it's important, but again, our administration uh, has to listen to some feedback from the from every subject, not only our core subjects, whether it be band or art or or PE, and then say, hey, you know what, maybe we can do this for these guys. Maybe while well, these core subjects are going to this in service, you know, we can pay somebody, you know, eight thousand dollars to come talk about this or you know, whatever it is. So it's it's all extremely important, but again, what is important to this person might not be as important to this person. Same thing with teachers, I mean kids in the classroom. You know, you're gonna have some kids in the classroom they're gonna be excited about what we're doing and some kids are gonna be like, oh whatever. That's, you know, I can't wait to do something else. So um, again, in services are important, but we gotta worry about what's gonna be beneficial for the teachers who are actually teaching those different subjects. Coach Davis Santos. What is the degree of importance to professional development that you've heard from other teachers and yourself? Well, again, I mean, it's important. Um, things change from day to day, so it's important to, to keep up with what is out there. But if uh, some of those core teachers would have to take a in-service geared towards physical education, I'm pretty sure they would feel like, why am I here? You know, this doesn't really pertain to you know, let's say I teach math, that doesn't pertain to me doing math. You know, so what, you know, so that's kind of what I feel sometimes, I mean, although they are beneficial, but not for physical education. I mean, we could, you know, and not just for physical education, but for, you know, all other classes like band and music. I mean, we could maybe get with another group, maybe between middle school and high school, elementary, I'm mean, trying, you know, to get something going to correlate something I mean um, just needs to we just need to go to training for where it's going to benefit our field. Coach Relative, what's the degree of importance that your members place on professional development and you? Okay I'm in a rock I'm in between a rock and a hard place here because since I did part of the technology uh, training today I had to clarify some things so that there's a better understanding what it was all about. Uh, it is important to have them, and again, it's got to all be geared towards something in some way, but you also have to understand of what can and what cannot help you in your way. The sway won't help coaches. I, that's definitely not, it's not going to help you on that. But for example, the Microsoft Office 365 Word document. So it's not going to help you get kids to do things, but it'll help you to plan better with other coaches if you can't meet all together in one place. So you can put a document online and both of you can be editing it at the exact same time. So now you have your collaboration and communication amongst coaches to be able to do that without having to call everybody into one location. So for scheduling and purposes like that, that's what that part of the technology is for. Now that we go in and say that, no, we did it today because it's just a broad overview of what Office 365 is about. And off, I, I sat for about two hours on the training initially, and I still had no clue what it all was. I mean, it's that, there's so much to Office 365 that it has to offer that uh, there's not enough time to do it, too. So timing is also an issue. You know, when you're in here for two and a half hours trying to throw everything at you, what, what, what is this? What am I doing? I don't understand and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, it's got to be planned out appropriately, too. Um, and then, just a side note, uh, this app right here, I know y'all can't really see it, it's iSchoolbox. That may be the one you're talking about, but you can put everything on there. So you go onto your computer and load your schedules and everything that you need, have your kids sign up to here, put it on the app, and they can see everything that they have. I use this for golf. 
But what, what's the income? What's your income? High school box. Team snap? Yeah, an high school box. High school box. Letter I. Coach Medina, what degree of importance do members of our school place on professional development and you personally? Well, I think sometimes we get caught with caught in a, I don't know, in a thought process of going ahead, moving ahead, and all of this. But we got to remember, you know, as administrators and stuff, we need to remember that we're hiring people, you know, in their first, second, you know, their first five years of, of coming into the education profession. Okay, and I think the actual timeline is by the third year or fourth year, that person's either going to decide they're going to be able to do this and this is for them, or they're going to go to a refinery or an oil company and, and do something different. I don't think. Well, just like technology is always advancing and stuff, I don't know if the young teachers are getting enough classroom management skills. And I won't just say to the young teachers, some of the older teachers have forgotten how to discipline the classroom. Okay? And me being in the ISS field, I see teachers, my goodness, I mean, a, a kid says to another kid, you know, shut the hell up. Well, she's writing them up. And it shouldn't be that way when, you know, there's little simple techniques like just walk over slowly to the noise maker. I could still be talking about a class lesson or something, and I can go, put a bell ring, stay here, see, I think I need to talk to you. Okay, they interfere. And just walk away and let that person, you know, take care of the problem, for one, but then speak with the problem so that it doesn't happen again. And there's all different types of classroom management techniques that have to be learned so that the young teachers become successful. And the old, and you know the older teachers don't just, oh, I'm writing you up and get out of here. Okay? I mean, stuff like that doesn't work. I mean, yeah, I could hear if you know physical assault or something like that, yeah, they should immediately be going to ISS. Maybe a thrown shoe, it just depends on how it's taken in the situation, was it meant to hurt somebody or was it just playing around? You know, that's got to be viewed by the, the PE teachers. What are, you know, it could be one or the other. It could be a write-up type of fence or it could be one of those where you talk to the kid and make sure that doesn't happen again. You know, when you, you know, when all kids understand pain. If they start doing 50 push-ups, it starts bothering them and it's painful to them, they're not going to want to do it again. Just like a dog, if he poops on the floor and you know you don't want him to do that. If you stick his nose in there and whack him on the butt and you throw him outside, hey, eventually he's gonna get the message. Okay? Kids are no different. You can't control kids unless they're afraid of something. Pain, getting their iPod taken away from them, uh, the getting their phone taken away, not getting to go to no, we're going to Waterbury. We'll bring you something back. You just stay here in your room, you know, or something. Take the TV away. Take all communication away from them. That'll hurt them more than, you know, probably a swat on the butt. So the, the basis of that question was? <laughs> out of this one, your kids. I don't know. No, the we need to class more classroom management. Management skills have to be yeah. talk to people. You're not just graduating from college. Yeah. I'm a classroom teacher, and I control the whole classroom. Okay, so maybe the maybe as a school district at the end of the year, then the school district needs to, needs to sit, take a step back and look, okay, this is what happened this school year. This is where we had all the problems, mm -hmm. which was, I think this year was classroom management. So then, yes, those end services need to be geared to that instead of, you know, whatever sway we're doing or whatever. Or you can, uh, from an administration standpoint, if somebody's writing up kids left and right and written over 100 referrals, Maybe they need to go to classroom management workshop. Yeah, that, that teacher, that individual. Yeah, that individual teacher right. needs to be sent there along with, you know, newbie over here and three-year man over here and the two-year girl over here that had trouble so much because she couldn't get the kids to stop talking. All that kind of stuff. You know, they're, you're setting them up to fail if you don't teach them and give them the skills to control the classroom. And it's getting worse every year. Yeah. Are you going to add on? Right. No. I was just going to say coaches can't do the in-service. Yeah. No. I mean, because we have the best classes. Like. Oh, yeah. 
We do. Sometimes. Like our classroom managed like really. I mean, I know it's hard to keep kids quiet and stuff, but if Coach Vasquez walked into somebody's classroom, it, it would just it's just and he would be like, be quiet, and it would just be. It's just a different. Yeah. It's just different. But some of this stuff, you know, we talk about professional development inadequate, being inadequate. Okay, and a lot of the stuff we talk about classroom discipline or classroom management, a lot of this stuff happens at home where there's no, maybe the parents need some professional development, you know, but uh, that ain't going to happen. You know, if there's no discipline at home, it's tough to discipline those kids at the school no matter what kind of teacher you are, so it's tough. It does have sense with the nature of our society now in general. Yes, sir. You know, single parent families that, you know, they work all night and, you know, they're not there for the kid. So to sum it up, then yeah, it's, okay. for, for to professional development, I think on the side note would be also to uh, notify and let those instructors of the professional development understand and learn that they can't just deliver their message of what their content is strictly based on the classroom atmosphere, but the entire classroom atmosphere, including and using examples of even in the gym and stuff to whatever it is that they're going to say, this is how this can work, we'll provide examples for everywhere, not just consistently in the classroom. And the teachers have to adapt from period to period because it's not always the same. I don't think. I don't yeah, think so. You're right. You're right. You ain't, they end up a perfect lesson in first period, and then you say, man, this was a great lesson for first period, and expect, and then you do the same thing second period, and then it doesn't work because it's a whole different breed of cats. I think yesterday's in service with, uh, you know, with the shooter on campus and stuff like that. Everybody needs that. Okay. Now, everybody doesn't need necessarily the classroom management. Okay, workshop, but some people do. Not everybody needed the technology, the advanced technology workshop of the day, but we needed the, you know. Technology for dummies, okay, <laughs> workshop for me, okay? People forget I, you know, I, they didn't offer typing until my senior year in high school. So that's how technology is fluent I am. Like, right, Coach, with the, with the shooter one, um, I would like to see more, kind of like the training they did at Walmart, because that's real life situation right. versus the way we do it is, you know, okay, well, somebody comes comments and where there's an intruder there's whatever it's totally different than if you have somebody there and like I mean, a mock you're yeah you're caught outside you're in the gym like there's different scenarios and I think you know that kind of training is, is gonna benefit everybody we did one like that I know where we, there was actually like yeah. police officers and we had to put tables on the windows the doors and there was like gunshots through the through the Inter the intercom system. It was interesting. There was smoke. Yeah, it was interesting. It was kind of scary. Okay, well, in conclusion, uh, yes. we're going to thank you for your participation, man. You're welcome, Coach Murray. And your very valuable time for. Uh, it was very enlightening. Th thank you. I feel like it went well. And um, to get a, uh, a survey of participants on a scale of one to ten, I go individually between each one of them. How was this uh, focus group? How well do you think it uh, achieved its goal and its relevance to the uh, plight of the professional development area? So you think it was relevant? One is no, ten is yes. Oh. Seven and a half. I'll oh, go nine. Ask her to tell Santos yes. Go to Santos, you have to go first. Okay, from one to ten, mm -hmm. ten being the best. It was best. very relevant. Awesome. This is a good experience. Very relevant. So ten, nice coach. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go ten. Ten, nice. Ten, ten. Yeah, very good. So you are a ten. At least a nine. That's okay. Yeah. Coach Lopez. Ten. Ten, sweet. Okay. We learned. Hey, if we learned. If one thing helped us, then it's 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 a ten. A ten. There you go. You get at least one thing out of it. All right, coach. Now, so what is team app or team snap?